Hello everyone. In this video, I want to show you an introduction to the Simulink 3D animation. So Simulink has this uh, nice environment called uh, 3D animation, where you can basically uh, create an environment and then run one or several of the components of it, the objects in it, using the signals coming from Simulink, right? So let's say you have a projectile and this projectile is launched from some point with some velocity and some angle and it's going to travel so much and then lands on the ground. So if you want to simulate it, right, you can have this ground block, you can even add texture to it, like here you can see that it has the texture of a um, brick and you can have it fixed, you can move it anywhere you want, you can add this ball and you can uh, basically add any graphics properties that you want to it, color, uh, reflection, anything you want, the size of it, and then have the position of this guy X, Y, Z, or just one of them, or two of them, to be determined from a simulation in Simulink. So let me show you here. Look. There we go. See? So it is running, and then when it is... Uh, hitting the ground, it would stop, right? So you see, that's a beautiful thing. And all of the data for it is coming directly from what this background simulink block, where here is a projectile with no air drag. So it's just A of X is zero, A of Y equals negative G. I have two velocity conditions, 20 cosine D of 45 and 20 sine D of 45, where 20 is the launch velocity and 45 is the launch angle. And I'm launching it uh, from 20 meters behind origin in the x direction and y of 1. And 1 because here the radius of the ball is 1. So if I want to basically the bottom of the ball touch the floor, I have to lift the center of it 1 meters up because the radius of this ball is about being, uh, is exactly a meter. And then wherever the bottom of the ball hits the ground when y is less than 1, I would stop the simulation. And then look, here I get the X of the ball, the Y of the ball, and the Z, which is zero. So I assume it's just in the X, Y plane. I put them to a boss block and send it to this, uh, sim, uh, to this uh, 3D animation, virtual reality environment, to control the position of the ball, right? So if I want to see it in Simulink, of course, all I can see is just the X, Y graph, right? So it's not really a big deal. And I'm sure at this point you have all done this part, right? So creating a XY graph like that is uh, no big deal, right? So here we go. But if you want to um, do an animation, maybe it's the first time you are doing it. So all I did here was I added this block called VR Sync, okay? And then I created an environment for it, a virtual reality environment. And before you can create that environment, in MATLAB, you have to go and say VR install and then uh, dash install editor. So you have to install the editor for the virtual reality environment. Then you can create a virtual reality environment. Okay, so here I'm going to do it again. Okay, so um, this, this part is quite clear what I did for the projectile. So now I go to Simulink 3D Animation, which is right down Simscape, underneath uh, Simscape. I go there, and then it has lots of blocks, okay? So my goal here is not to go over each and every one of them. My goal is here just to uh, tell you about the simple block here called VR Sync, okay? That's called VR Sync, and I'm going to what? I'm going to use this block, which takes the Simulink data and apply it to uh, components in the environment. So I bring this virtual uh, VR Sync, right? And now I need to start creating what? An environment. So I double click on this guy to open it. If I have a file, uh, an environment ready, I can browse for it, like this one I made already. I can bring it up. Or I can go ahead and start a new one. So here I say new, give me a new uh, uh, blank environment and I'm going to create it. And here what I need is the sphere for the ball. I need a, a box, right? And make it wide and narrow for the ground, add some textures, colors to them. 
maybe make the background uh, blue to resemble the sky, something like that. Huh? So you need to add some components under this root, basically, here. So how do we do it here? Look, I have this root. I go under nodes, and each one of those uh, objects here is called a node. So I go to node, and you see I can add a node of different types, right? There are appearance. You see some of them are inactive right now. I can create a background node, and I can go to geometry. You see they are off right now, but later uh, I can do add those. But if you want, a simple thing you can do is go under insert file, insert from, and you can what? You can bring them from these libraries uh, for virtual reality. Or if you have STL files, right, you made in a CAD software, you can read them in as well, okay, or other types. So here I use the files in the library, and I go to the component library, and then it brings uh, different things. You see there are lots of things here. You can add furnitures, you can add food, you can add all sorts of things, dishes, aircraft, you see, dinosaurs. <laughs> backgrounds it's, it's really cool it's really cool what you can do right and you can add shapes and so on so for example if i go to background right you see there are all sorts of backgrounds you can add uh this one was a nice one right there are lots of things that you can add let's go with this one i guess this one is really good so i would add that and it's already added for me here in the background Okay, it's already added here. Uh, of course, I need to go with proper angle, but you can see that uh, here uh, this background is added. And I can go underneath the background, and there are lots of things I can control, okay? So there is the sky angle, right? There is the ground color, right? There is the sky color. There are all sorts of things here that uh, you can go and you can change, right? So here, uh, I might go ahead and make this uh, sky red. Let's see. You see here? So uh, now uh, it has changed a little bit. And uh, you can, uh, if there is any metadata, you can see it. But right now, you see here, uh, these different uh, things that you have and these angles I assume they should be in radians let's try that ah that's the angle for the color I assume not really the angle ground color but again as I told you I can change the angles okay so that's not a big thing so this is a background this is a static thing i don't want to change that what i care about is a ground that is also static but the most important one is the ball so what i will do here is i go and again uh, bring more things so maybe this time i want to bring in a box so i go under sh uh, shapes and i want a box so i add a box here okay you can see the box over there and then uh, you see here, uh, it just adds something like background, transform, and so on. So you can always rename them. If you don't like this name, you can go ahead and edit the name and call it My Background or something, or Sky Background. Uh, just make sure it, it goes with the same naming convention as MATLAB. You cannot use a space or a dash or anything. You have to use underscore if you want to. And this guy here is the uh, ground, the box, right? So I can right-click on this one and change the name of it and call it floor or ground or something, okay? And then I can go underneath the ground, and there are lots of things you can change. So if you go under children, under shape, then there is appearance and geometry. So if you go under geometry, you see the box. And here, you can see the size is 2 by 2 by 2, right? So let's say I want to make it 40 meters in one direction, uh, 0.5 meters in the Y is upward direction, and in the Z direction, maybe 6 meters, okay? And apply that, and there we go. You see, now I made it uh, thin and flat and long. And uh, if you want, you can change the uh, geometry, uh, the appearance of it. Right now, it's just black, as you can see, right? So you can change that if you want. And uh, right now, as I said, it's just uh, kind of black color or gray color. 
if you want, you can go to appearance and under appearance, there are lots of things. There is this texture. If you want, you can apply texture, right? You can change color of it or anything you want. There are lots of things you can do. You can go under material and apply different things, right? You can use a diffuse color right now. It's a gray, but let's say if I want to apply yellow, I can make it yellow or anything, right? So I would rather uh, apply a texture to it to make it nicer than a color. So as I said, I go to this texture and then I go to nodes again and say insert from file. And this time I go to texture library. And there are space textures and general textures. I go to general and there are all sorts of bricks here that I like. So maybe I go with this one and I okay that. And there we go. You see that uh, texture is added to the floor. And uh, now that is the ground. Now, of course, I need to add uh, the ball, right? So I can go ahead and again, go to uh, nodes and then insert file from components. This time again, I want a shape, but that shape has to be the sphere. So that's this guy and I okay that. And you see that the sphere is added right there. And now I uh, want to give it a name first. So I call it the ball and now I go under the ball and I go under children again, under shape, go under geometry, under sphere. And you see there is a radius of one, which is good. It's solid. It's all good. If I want, I can uh, change the location of the ball, right? I can bring it up, let's say. So I can go here, I can rotate the ball, I can change the scale of it, I can go under translation and move it up and down. So let's say I want to move it up along the y direction. So I go here to 5 and I apply that and you see it moved up in the y direction, right? And if I want to change the color of it, again, remember I can go ahead and do that. So you see there are uh, lots of controls here. Whether you want to see it or not, again, translation is the position of that. You can change the scale, rotation and everything you can change the center of it from zero 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 to somewhere else if it's not really a homogeneous ball right so let me go ahead and uh, change the color of this as well maybe so go under appearance and uh, let's see if i can change the color of this guy um diffuse color and let's make it red there we go so the ball is ready now and the radius of one is good. I don't need to change that right now. So let's say that's all I want. Okay, very simple. And I go ahead and save it. And it should be saved as the .wrl for virtual reality. And uh, I call it a projectile, right? Or maybe call it this one projectile new, right? Don't change the other one. So I make this one and let's say get out of here. So now that I have that, I can go to the browse and I can get this one and add it and okay that. So now you see it changes to the shape of the background. The problem is right now, uh, there is no uh, input to this uh, virtual reality to bring those XYZ signals combined into one vector and pass it to. So you double click here to open up the preview window, you see, there we go. You can see it, right? You can clearly see that's your uh, background made of uh, bricks, or at least not made of bricks, but texture of bricks. And that's the ball up there. So now you can go under simulations, go to block parameters, and say which one of the these uh, three nodes you want, what parameter of them to be controlled from simulating. So I go under the ball, and I say, I'm interested in translation of this guy. And I apply that and I okay that. So now if I get out, look, now you have the input. And uh, the important thing that I need to mention, if I go back here, uh, if you look, the type of thing that it takes is a vector three. Okay, so you need to pass to it all three components, X, Y, and Z. You cannot just pass to it X and Y in this case because there is no Z. So you have to say, hey, Z is zero, okay? Uh, or uh, you can just use the other block, which is called VR signal expander, and uh, you can expand something, right? Uh, basically add like a, um, 
empty thing, right? A bunch of zeros or empties to it. But here I would rather bring a constant of zero and x and y, use a boss block, combine them, and then pass it to this ball. So now the x of it starts from, it should start from negative 20. The y of it should start from zero. And the uh, x dot and y dot should be 20 cosine and 20 sine of 45. Now here, if I run it, in the beginning, if you remember, the ball was not at negative 20 and 1. It's at 0 and 5. So when I start this simulation, the ball first jumps to here, and not as smooth, just jump to initial position, and then what? Then the flight starts. Okay, let me show you what happens. Uh, so here I'm going to save it, and I'm going to run it so you can see what's going on. Right? Look, you see? It jumped to the beginning, and boom, it went all the way to the end. Right? So if you want, you can uh, control that. Right? And let me see if I can go down to 0.5 for this, or something like that. And uh, you can bring the initial position of the ball back. So what you need is go back to that environment that you made, and you need to edit that. So here I double click on the sink. And uh, here, uh, if you go to file and open in editor, it should open it in editor for you. So you can modify it. And remember, you cared about the ball, and you cared about the translation in the beginning. And what you want to do is to bring it at negative 20 and 1. Okay, now it goes in the back. So now that's exactly where the simulation is going to happen or start. Okay, so now if I go back and save and go back now, it should start in the right location that the simulate does. And uh, it should not have that uh, jump in the beginning. Uh, let's see. Seems like I took it to the other side. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, it seems like I took it to the other side. But again, what you can do here is, uh, I guess I took it to um, uh, negative 20. So this guy's uh, shown backwards. Right? So this guy should be positive 20. And uh, the other thing you might want to do is uh, maybe you need to make this box a little bit bigger because it's kind of falling out of the box, right? So let me make this box, uh, not the ball, the box, the ground. You need to make it a little bit uh, bigger so uh, nothing sticks out of it. There we go. Okay, so now hopefully... We have something appropriate, run, there we go. So now in the beginning, it goes to here. Let me save it. And it does what you intended for it. Okay, so hopefully uh, this uh, intro was useful to you and there is a lot that you can do now to control the signal you maybe want to have it bounce back right then if you if that's the case then you need to have something to control the velocity of it right or control the force on the block or anything like that and modify these numbers right or modify these initial velocities right so here you see you have uh, initial condition right and uh this initial condition is typed in but if you want you can have it what external and then you see now it is coming from somewhere else so whenever this hits the ground you can have some block that whenever the signal becomes one it restarts the initial conditions in the x or in the y direction uh, specifically in the y with the coefficient of restitution and have the ball bounce back. So hopefully it was useful to you and I'm going to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.